Hey guys, um, here is a brief introduction to uh, chapter three. Um, chapter three deals with many things that you have seen before. Um, uh, a lot of things about how we think about data in the broadest possible sense. Um, but the chapter is divided up into five sections. We're actually going to skip 3.3, so don't worry about that one. It's an interesting section, but we don't cover that in this class. Um, but we're going to think about sort of the three uh, different ways we think about how data looks in its summary form. And the first thing I want to talk about actually is um, a little bit broader of a topic, which is just the idea of shape. And so with shape, what we really want to just think about is this broad idea um, of how data looks. And here are four shapes that we see with data a lot. Um, the symmetric one, which is often bell-shaped, um, meaning that the bump is middle, is highest in the middle. Um, we sometimes call that a normal distribution, although we'll see uh, soon enough that that's a very particular term. Now, because data does kind of clump in one place, we either see the symmetrical shape or we see positive or negative skewed. We sometimes call that left skewed and right skewed, um, where the clump goes all the way um, in the middle, but the tail goes to one side or the other. And that's especially common in places where you have a hard uh, line on one side. So for instance, uh, income is one where, you know, there sort of is a natural limit of how little you can make in a year. And while there are some people who make negative amounts of money due to debt and other kind of weird things, pretty much no one makes less than zero. You can imagine there are a bunch of people who don't make very much, but then there's a very long tail of people who make a lot of money. Um, the final shape I want to mention is just a uniform distribution, which is this idea that it's pretty even across um, the whole distribution. And, you know, if you think about things like dice or, uh, you know, picking a card out of a deck or spinning a wheel or whatever that is, that's where you get the uniform distribution. In nature, actually, most things are one of the top two distributions that I have here, either a symmetric normal shape or with the skew in the one direction, life expectancy, income things like that. Most things that we measure, the height of a tree, the um, length of a river, any of those kind of things typically follow that normal distribution. Okay, so um, that's kind of the first uh, sort of broad idea. And whether or not our data is symmetric or skewed is going to influence a lot what we're going to do in all of these other parts of chapter three. So um, the first thing we talk about then is the center of a data set. Um, and um, the data set center, um, we have three ways we measure that, mean, median, or mode. The mean is the arithmetic average. You've probably seen this before in other classes, but you just add up how many there are and you divide by it. You remember uh, StatCrunch or Minitab or whatever, or Excel for that matter, can calculate the mean pretty easily as you do that. Um, whether it's a population or a sample doesn't matter for that. Now, when our data set is skewed and it has some outliers way out in the extreme, the mean is more sensitive to outliers. So sometimes we prefer to use the median. The median is the middle value. So if you imagine just lining them all up in order, then the one in the middle, the midpoint, the 50th percentile, that's the median. The median is less uh, influenced by outliers. So if you imagine you're thinking about income, you're thinking about Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and all those guys, they mess up the mean a lot. And in fact, by one measure, the top 10 richest people moves the average income of all American households by as much as $100, those 10 families out of 100 million families. Um, if instead you look at the median, all they would do is move it over you know, five bumps. And so in that case, the median wouldn't move very much at all. Um, again, calculating it is, um, you know, the computer does it for you very easily, but if you just think of you're going to sort the data from smallest to biggest and then count in. If we have two points, we take the average of those. Okay, so here's just a quick example. Again, these aren't in order, so your first step would be to put these in order, three, four, six, seven, eight, and if you do that, three, four, six, seven, eight, it's easy to say that six is the middle. The second one has an even number, so one, three, four, five, nine, twelve, well, one, three, four, five, nine, twelve. Four and five are our two middle points, so our median is going to be four and a half. Notice uh, again that and if you have a symmetric data set, the mean and the median are going to be pretty close to each other, but for a skewed data set, they're going to be farther apart. Um, okay, and then the last one is the mode. The mode is just the most common data set, and typically we don't use this for numeric data at all. 
um, it is really easy to count. You just look for where the big clump is, the highest point in a chart. Um, but it's really useful in categorical data. So if I had a bag of M&Ms and you said, which color is there the most of, that's easy. If I ask you what the average color is, that's a lot harder. Um, so again, if you have a symmetric data set, the mean and the median are going to be equal or very close to each other, um, since most data isn't perfectly symmetric. If your data is skewed to the right, a positive skew, the mean will be bigger than the median. So again, the average income will be higher if you use the mean. The median income will be lower um, and things like that. Negative skewed, again, it's more rare, but if that happens, then the mean will be, again, towards the tail when you have data like that. Okay, um, the next video we'll get into uh, is 3.2.